In Power Automate Desktop, we often want our flow to take different path based on a value. So let's create a variable with a value, then evaluate on that value with an if and a switch and let our flow take different path. So go up in actions and then find a set variable and drag it in. We want to evaluate whether or not it is a rainy day. And imagine this variable, the value of it comes from another system, for example, a forecast service. So here I'll say expected amount of rain, and then let's give it the value five. Before we want uh, to call it a rainy day, we need to have more than 15 of expected amount of rain. You can see it as millimeters. So then I can click save. Let's create that condition with an if. So it looks like this. I'll find an if. And if always asks a question that can be answered true or false. So let's evaluate on this expected amount of rain variable. So I click this little X here expected amount of rain and double click. I want to say if this is greater than or equal to 15, then I want to do something. So this will be the true, otherwise it will be false. Per default, everything that comes in between the if and end, that will be if this expression is true. A little bit later, we will make the other branch that is if this is false. So if this is true, that means it is a rainy day. So let's find a hey, display message and drag it in here inside the if. Here I will just say it's a rainy day like this. I can click save. Before I run it, can you tell me whether or not this display message will get shown? I'll click here. And no, it will not get shown because this expression says we only want to run whatever's in here if this value expected amount of rain is larger than or equal to 15, and it's really not. But we also want to tell, uh, not right now it says it's a rainy day, but we also want to tell if it's not a rainy day. And we can do that very easy. So find an else and drag an else in uh, below or uh, down here. So now we created these two branches in our if. So if this is true, everything from the if and down to the else will get performed. And if it's not true, everything from else and end will get performed. Let's just do another display message. And we're lazy as automation developers. So mark this one with a single mouse click, control C, move your mouse down to end, click here once, control V that will paste in the action the correct place. Now I can open it. And here I'll just say it's not a rainy day and I can click save. So let's try to run it. And um, here you'll say it is a, it is not a rainy day. That's what we wanted. And we can click uh, OK. Now let's change it up here to maybe 15 because now it will be a rainy day. So now when I run this, it will say it is a rainy day. I click OK. That's it. So now we created an if that asks a question and it will take two different directions. So it will take the, either a true direction, everything up here, or a false direction down here. And when these actions are performed, it will jump to the end and then take the actions that will come down below. Right now, we will not have any further actions. But what if we wanted to have three outcomes? With an if, we can only have two, either true or false then we can introduce a switch. So, and let me just um, click this little if up here, press shift in and click the end, right click and disable actions. Now these ones here will get ignored, not the set variable. So, and a switch can be seen as an if on steroids. And uh, the way we introduce it here is that we'll say switch and drag it in here. So the value to check, that will still be the expected amount of rain like this. So here you can see we have the switch and then we have the end. Now we need to define, so nothing will really happen right now. We need to define some cases and a case look like this. So up here in actions, I'll find a case and drag it inside the switch. 
So the first case is that if this expected amount of rain, that's the base that we are evaluating on, if that is equal to zero, then we want to do something. So case zero. We also want to have a case whenever uh, the expected amount of rain is larger than or equal to 15. We are not doing anything yet, but let's just create the cases first. So here we want to say, if the expected amount of rain is greater than or equal to 15, then we also want to do something. We also want to do something whenever the expected amount of rain is between 0 and 15. That is our third case. We couldn't create that with an if, but we can do it now. And now an important concept comes in, but let us just first create the case. So here I will just say, if this is greater than 0, then we want to do something. And here you might say, well, we look at the expected amount of rain. Then if it's zero, fine, we'll perform the actions that will come in here. We'll see that in a little while. But, and then we'll go to the end. But uh, let's say that it's uh, above zero, then the actions will be performed here. And this will actually, um, a switch will perform the case that comes the first. That means that say, um, um, this one here uh, will actually be um, larger than zero, then uh, this one will not be performed because it will take this one first, say it's, say it's 16, then this one will be true, it performs this, and then it will not perform this. So what we need to do is to move it up here. Then let's just have some display messages and then let's test our flow. So with, uh, with this equals to zero, that means, it's not a rainy day like this. And with 15, we want to have it a rainy day. So I'll say it's a rainy day. Very easy. And then this zero. We change the order of it because the, the, they will pe be performed uh, only one of them. And so if it was like 16, then uh, these both of these two could actually be seen as true, but we want to um, to make it here. That's why we have it uh, first before the larger than zero. So and then it is uh, a slightly rainy day. That is if it's between zero and 15 like this. So now we have our three conditions and let's just test it uh, from the start. Let's say zero. So if it's zero, then it will not be a rainy day. That's fine. We go into the correct case and we click OK. It's done. Now let's change this to, for example, 10. Then it will be a slightly rainy day. Let's see if uh, that actually is true as well. Yes. And now let's change it to 16 to see that we have the order of the cases correct in the correct sequence. So I'll say 16. And now you'll see it will say it's a rainy day and finish. That's it. That's how easy it is to work with condition if and switches. Watch this next video up here that will teach you the next important concept of Power Automate Desktop. See you.